Hello guys, this is Anik Mukhopadhyay and I am back with the second lecture of Carbin chapter. So, what did we learn in the first lecture? In the first lecture, we basically learned the two types of carbene, which are the singlet carbene and the triplet carbene, right? One has spin multiplicity of one, another has three. I hope you all remember these things. If you haven't watched the previous video, please see that first, else you won't understand this video to the fullest. So, what did we say that we will learn in this chapter? We will study main about the formation of carbenes right and what are for sorry what are carbene used for they are used as reaction intermediates reaction intermediates so now we will study in what type of reactions carbenes are act carbenes act as intermediates and we will start with learning that how do carbenes get formed just like you know how carbocation gets formed when a living sorry when a nucleophile weak nucleophile approaches something attached with the living group the living group if it's a good living group it lives on itself and the carbocation is formed so like that we will learn how carbenes are formed here so let me give our first heading which would be by the use of chcl3 and koh okay chcl3 which is chloroform as far as i remember and koh is potassium hydroxide so what happens here is let me draw the main reaction you know that koh means just oh minus and here we have h c cl 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 now as you remember what does an oh minus what is this this is a base and what does base one it wants an h plus so it will grab the proton from here and it will create water this is always what happens right acid plus base equal to salt plus water so water we got and with that what will we get c cl3 minus now see this thing usually shouldn't have been stable because it's an anion and it's directly car connected to carbon but how is it stable let me tell you if you see the structure on the carbon we have the minus charge and we have c chlorine three chlorines as you know chlorines are highly electronegative so they will provide an inductive effect they will pull the electron density towards themselves so thus the amount of minus charge here becomes less and the chlorines accumulate a slight minus charge here sorry not del minus sorry not del plus i meant del minus so here uh, if there are a del minus is introduced here a del plus would be introduced so thus it is stabilized stabilized by inductive effect this thing is called inductive effect if you don't know what inductive effect is well i just told you it's just an electronegative atom pulling electrons towards itself and if you still need more information you can watch general organic chemistry lectures mm -hmm. there you would be told it in a very detailed way we haven't started those lectures yet but they would be coming soon okay so now you see this was the first step of the reaction i should write with a different color this was the step one now in the step two what happens is here is our beautiful ccl3 minus okay now what happens is one of the chlorine leaves because you know chlorine is a highly electronegative atom cl minus is stable so what will we get first of all we will get cl minus that is very easy to understand and we have one chlorine one chlorine with the carbon here one of the orbitals would have both the electrons and the other orbital would lose its electrons so what we would get here is if you remember from the previous video this is called a singlet carbene so in this case a singlet carbene is formed let me scroll down a bit just a second okay now 
If you have some confusion in how exactly the singlet carbine was formed, let me elaborate it a bit. So see, basically what happened here is, this was the carbon. What is the minus charge? The minus charge means two electrons, right? And this is the chlorine, this is the chlorine, this is the chlorine. Now, here is one bonded electron, here is the other bonded electron. Now, if the chlorine leaves us minus charge, it will take both the electrons with itself, right? And if it takes both the electron with itself, carbon would be left with an empty orbital and these two lone pairs. But it would no longer have the minus charge, although it has that lone pair. Why won't it have the minus charge? Because law of conservation of charge, if chlorine took the minus charge and went away by excess electrons, of course, carbon would no longer have the minus charge. So, this is how uh, singlet carbines was formed using this mechanism. Now, some factors which you need to know about this is, see, if we have something like, sorry, that won't be Cl, that would be carbon. Now it has an empty orbital, right? And you know what is the medium here? Our medium is water, water and KOH, whatever. It's a polar medium as you know. Always whatever has empty orbitals, it's always stabilized by donation of electron pairs from outside places. Why? Because it's an electrophile as I told in the previous video. So what is this phenomena called? that waters are coming from all sides and donating their electron pairs with or without consent. This is called back bonding. Back bonding. So this is another feature that I wanted to tell you that I forgot in the previous video, which is singlet carbines are stabilized by back bonding. Singlet carbines are stabilized by back bonding. I hope this is clear to you now completely. So let me scroll down again. Okay. Now we would study about the order of stability of these things. Now what is the order of stability of what things which I told? Of course the singlet carbines. Now let me tell you something. Suppose you see here are lone pairs, right? So of course it can it can do back bonding like this. What is back bonding? Donation of lone pair. But similarly, chlorine also has lone pair here. The chlorines also have lone pairs. So of course the chlorines can also donate their electron density. This thing which happens, this is called intramolecular back bonding. And this blue one, which happened, this is called intermolecular. Now, I want to take some time to talk about the stability in the intramolecular back bondings. See, suppose you have C with 2F and the carbene structure. Then you have chlorine, which I just drew right now. Fluorine, then chlorine, then comes bromine, then comes our big boy iodine. All of them are carbines, don't worry. Now, all of them will have lone pairs, right? Now, can you tell me that what would be the ratio, not ratio, the order of stability of these things? Try to think and tell, pause the video and think. Okay, so now let me tell you what would be the order. First of all, all of this would do back bonding. There is no suspicion in that. The difference is, see, what is what type of orbitals does carbon have? What is carbon's atomic number? Six, right? 1s2, 2s2, 2p something. So, this has 2p orbital. This has 2p orbital. Carbons in everything has their 2p orbital. But chlorine has 3p. Bromine has 4p. 
and iodine has 5p. So here we have 2p 2p back bonding. Here we have 2p 3p back bonding. We have 2p 4p back bonding. Here we have 2p 5p back bonding. So of course, the more would they be compatible with each other, the longer would their relationship last. That's the first motto of any relationship. You must be very compatible. So this is the most compatible, thus most stable. And this is the least stable. This is what I wanted to tell you. And remember another thing, triplet carbenes do not have lone pair or vacant orbital. So they are not stabilized by back bonding because who gets stabilized by back bonding? Electrophiles, just like I told. Okay, so now let me clear the board and bring the next topic. Okay. Now the second way by which these things can be formed is by use of RLI. What is RLI? This is alkyl lithium. Alkyl lithium. This R can be any alkyl group. Now see, let me draw the reaction first. Suppose we have CCL4. Let me draw the CCL4 beautifully. Now, if we put RLI in this, which is nothing but R minus Li plus, just like Grignard reagent, RMGX, R minus MGX plus. So, this will create RCL plus Li. CCL3 minus Li plus CCL3 minus. Okay. Now, what is this CCL3 minus? Just like the previous one, as you remember, it is stabilized like that CCL3 minus. Now, again, chlorine would leave just like the previous time. And what would be formed? Correct. The singlet carbene once more. So, this also creates singlet carbene. Okay. What else do we have by which we can create such carbenes? Our third method is by use of diazomethane. Now, what is diazomethane? Diazomethane is this compound CH2 N N. Nitrogen is told azo, is told as azo. They, as there are two nitrogens, it's called diazo. Now, let me draw. Here we have CH2 double bond N double bond N. Now, if we apply heat or solar radiation, now, before anything, let me tell you one thing. Whenever you see these reagents in carbenes, these will create triplet carbenes. Triplet carbenes. So, of course, N2 is the best living group. What will happen is, as you know, this thing is a free radical initiator. So, nothing happens, just N2 leaves as N2 is a very stable gas, they just want to go away. So, N2 will just go away, plus we will get our CH2 biradical. You remember what biradical is, of course. So, triplet carbene would be formed. So, these were the three methods of creating carbenes. There is one last method which uses a compound with a strange name yet a familiar one. Its name is by use of ketenes. K-E-T-E-N-E-S. Yes. Just like ketone, ketene. Now, this is a bit confusing name. So, let me explain it first. What is ketone? 
of course you know what ketone is right ketone is something like this now what is ketene ketene is a molecule in which this group is present this this type of sp hybrid carbon is present okay now let me draw the reaction of course we have our ketene how ketenes are formed well this is a discussion for another day in this topic only don't worry again we give delta h mu that means triplets would be formed so what will happen here is carbon monoxide would go out plus we will get this thing again this is our triplet but what's the necessity of just memorizing this like this, right? So, let us learn its mechanism that how it actually happens. Well, the mechanism is also pretty easy. Here we have CH2CO and on top of O, here we have this lone pair. What happens is this lone pair backlashes into here and of course, carbon ki patch bond nahi ban sakte. So, that bond would backlash into the carbon. So, what would form is CH2 minus. Then you will have C without any change of charge. Then triple bond O and here you would have a plus charge on O. Okay. Now, of course, this thing is very unstable. There is a plus charge on O and not what not. So, what will happen after this? This bond will break away. And if this bond breaks away, you can understand that this charge would be neutralized after that. So, what will form if the bond breaks away? CO is nothing but our carbon monoxide. And with that, we have our CH2 and two orbitals, unpaired electrons. Again, let me remind you, these are unpaired don't forget because this questions very often come now you see just like i told that the singlet carbenes are more pol more pres sorry they are more stable in the polar medium due to the back bonding of the polar medium but in this case no back bonding happens so let me write down even though you have understood that triplet carbenes triplet carbenes are more stable in non-polar medium. Okay. What are polar mediums? Things like water, alcohols, in which all, in which mediums there is a gradient of charge visible within the molecule and everything else there is non-polar. So, this was this video guys. In the next video, let me tell you what will we continue. Please note down everything, rewind the video and write the notes. Now, let me delete this and tell me what I will do. Sorry, tell you guys what we will do in the next video. Well, we will start our reactions. As I told, reactions along with their mechanisms because just reactions are useless this we will learn in the next video as i told things like rimer time and iron easter carbilamin reaction all these reactions whose name you have heard before are actually part of the carbene family so that was this video guys please see the video completely so that you don't get any problems in understanding the topic don't forget to like, share and subscribe this video with your friends and all the people who are in need of such videos. So that was my time. I am Onik Mukhopadhyay and we are the part of Mathesics Education, providing lossless education worldwide.